so in today's session we'll discuss about diet in obesity and underweight diet in obesity and underweight it's chapter 15 page number 290 those who have the new textbook please mention the page number in the chat box 289 in the new textbook If anyone joins late, please help them out with the topic name or the page number. So obesity, the prevalence of obesity is increasing day by day. Okay, because there is a positive energy balance, which means you are taking more calories, but you are not burning that much of calories. Okay, you are not spending that energy. So the cal calories is accumulating in your body and that is making you overweight and obese. Okay, so the prevalence rate, obesity rate in most of the countries worldwide is increasing. It is becoming a very important public health risk as well because there is a lot of uh, chronic diseases, inflammatory diseases associated with obesity. Okay, so even in children and adolescents, okay, they are also getting overweight and obese. Okay, and it also indicates uh, a risk of higher rate of uh, body mass index. Okay, and along with uh, obesity, a lot of diseases like atherosclerosis, high blood pressure, stroke, diabetes, gallbladder diseases, arthritis, okay, varicose veins, these all increase with the rate of increase in obesity. Okay. So in all age group, not just uh, not just uh, your adults, but all age groups are facing this obesity challenges. Am I audible to all? So common symptoms in adults, sweating more than usual, snoring, shortness of breath, Varicose veins, okay, skin problems with, with, that starts with varicose veins. Okay, these are the symptoms in adults. In children, again, sleep apnea, not able to breathe while they're sleeping or lying back. Slightly their head has to be uh, lifted up, okay. Acanthosis nigricans, that is the dark colored neck, okay. The neck folds, groin area, wherever there are skin folds, okay those areas become very dark and velvety. Okay, so that is acanthosis nigricans. Then shortness of breath with physical activity, even if they are slightly getting physically active, it, they become breathless. Okay, stretch marks on skin. Even if you gain a lot of weight, lose a lot of weight, stretch marks do happen because what is stretch marks? They are scars beneath your skin. Okay. Scars not on top of the skin, scars beneath your skin. Okay, so that is stretch marks. Then uh, morbid obesity, we usually nowadays, we don't use the term morbid obesity. It is grade 3 obesity. When your body mass index is above 35 and 40, that's morbid obesity. Okay, difficulty in breathing, difficulty in walking, these all are the symptoms and people, they can't even do their own physical activities for personal hygiene or personal physical activities. They are dependent on somebody else when it comes to morbid obesity. Okay. So causes of ob obesity, first is genetic factors. Okay. So 50 to 70% of a person becoming fat. Okay. Uh, depends on their genetics. If their parents were obese, overweight, grandparents are obese and overweight, high chances that children will also inherit the same genes of obesity because metabolism plays an important role here. Within families, there is a chance of 80% if both the parents are obese, 50% if, it, if just one parent is obese. And like there are various other genes also that plays role in this. Okay, gene names are mentioned in your textbook that like you don't have to buy hard that. Okay, but genes are involved in obesity. Then age and sex, females at any age group are at higher risk of developing obesity 
as compared to men or males in any age group. Okay. It can occur, obesity can happen at any age, but inherently the female gender is at more risk of becoming overweight and obese because uh, females naturally have a lot of adiposity, tendency to store fat. Okay. Especially when females are in their reproductive age group. Okay. Once periods have started, young girls, once their menarche has set off, okay, the, the, the adiposity in the body increases. It's the biological way in the body is preparing itself for any chance of pregnancy or lactation. Okay. Then eating habits. There are a lot of lifestyle and eating habits that leads to obesity, okay? Like if you are snacking in between your meals, very common among housewives, okay? When they are cooking food, they go and tasting their food if it is fine or not, okay? So they have had a good amount of portion in between their meals and not uh, chewing your food properly before swallowing it, okay? And uh, eating a lot of sweet food, processed food that does not keep you full. It makes you hungry again and again. Okay. People who are fond of cooking a lot of variety of food, they are also at a risk of becoming obese. And people who have uh, sedentary work, work life, okay, just sitting in one place and doing their job. And also, uh, her obesity rate is higher in housewives. Why? Because... Uh, they have to eat the leftover food that if the if the husband is not finishing the food or the children are not finishing the food to avoid wastage of food they will eat the food okay so that also leads to obesity people who go out and eat more rather than cooking at home eating more junk food okay and eating a lot of sweets in indian culture we have lots of festivals okay one after the other one after the other uh, there are like usually after a certain time period in, in, uh, after monsoons it's, it's it's the festival season one after the other okay so there are there are oh there is an over consumption of sweets and not including fruits and vegetables on a daily basis okay having high non-vegetarian diet with high fat eating a lot of processed food uh consuming uh uh, the soft drinks and cold drinks on a daily basis, on a regular basis. People who work in night shifts, their shifts change frequently, okay? With that, their sarkadam rhythm also uh, change, okay? Housewives who are fond of cooking, they, tr they try to make a variety of dishes. They try new things, new recipes, okay? And usually... Uh, whatever new things you want to cook it's usually something very special okay it has more fat or it is a very occasional food or something like that but you make it into a routine you are eating it between just to taste it okay to make it sure that you give the best to your family you are tasting it so a lot of calories is going in then you sit and have with your family if your uh, if your children are not finishing the food then that also you have to eat so this is why people who are fond of cooking a variety of food without understanding the amount of calories that goes into making this recipe rather than sticking to their staple food, okay, that is good for their gut health, good for their day-to-day -day health, okay, trying out new things. Usually, you are, you, you are unaware of how much ingredients go into making those, those recipes, okay. So, these are certain eating habits, consuming high carbohydrate food, but not uh, uh, um, not burning off those uh, calories. The physical activity, people who lead a sedentary lifestyle are more prone to become obese. And even in among school children, Kids who study a lot, spend a lot of time studying and don't physically exercise or don't participate in extracurricular activities, school games, okay? And they use, uh, instead of bicycling, they use vehicles to commu commu uh, commute to the schools and all. They are at higher risk of developing obesity. Then stress. 
stress eating okay when people are stressed they want to eat more some people okay they uh, because during stress they find happiness through food because food can stimulate the secretion of endorphins okay so that's a ha happy hormone mood lifting hormone and endo endorphin so you automatically associate stress with eating food okay whenever you feel stress you eat something uh, endorphins are secreted you feel good okay so that's your that becomes your coping me mechanism to cope with stress you start eating and the more stressed you are the more you will eat okay an endocrine factor uh, women uh, people suffering from thyroid issues hypothyroidism hypogonadism hypogonadism is uh, your gonads in men it is the testes and women it is the ovaries okay testes and ovaries are the gonads so if the gonads your uh, sexual organs are not producing enough amount of hormones Okay, testes is supposed to is supposed to secrete testosterone in men. Ovaries are, are supposed to produce estrogen and progesterone. So in hypogonadism, respectively, men and women won't be producing enough amount of these hormones. Okay, so that's an endocrine disorder, Cushing syndrome. That's a thyroid disorder. Okay, so these factors will affect obesity. And also during puberty, some girls who attend puberty immediately they start eating a lot of food because of that hormonal rush that's happening to keep up that with that they start eating a lot of food and uh, even in certain cultures once the girl has started menstruating okay they feed her a lot of food a lot of like there is some uh, a ritual seven days rituals are there in certain cultural practices where a lot of fried food okay family relatives will come and feed you some processed food fried food some sweets and all because you have attained menarche okay so these rituals are there and that also has the tendency to make girls obese during puberty during pregnancy you gain a lot of weight menopause okay so these all are factors then trauma, uh, if any damage that happens to your hypothalamus after any head injury, because hypothalamus is also supposed to secrete hormones that make you feel full, okay? That now you don't want any more food. It is full. Your brain signals uh, you that don't eat anything more. You Your, your stomach is full. So during any form of head injury, hypothalamus won't be able to function properly. It is not able to um, control your appetite and satiety levels. Okay, You may eat more than what is required and you will still not feel full. Okay, Then prosperity and civilization. The more prosperous a country is, Okay, the more highly sophisticated and developed your state or country is, more is your economic performances. Okay, with that, obesity rate increases because you have an access to a lot of food at a very cheaper rate. Pe affordability, people think that since they can afford more food, they will eat more food. Okay, so because of prosperity and civilization, obesity rate increases in those geographical areas even in india if you see the states that perform well the states that perform well in economic indicators okay the states who have better gdp and all you will find obesity rates higher in those states like all the south indian states maharashtra punjab okay they these are high performing states in india in terms of economics okay and you see the highest number of lifestyle diseases and obesity cases also in these states okay then certain drugs that promote weight gain certain antidepressants steroid based drugs certain contraceptives diabetic drugs allergy drugs antihistamines okay being used to these drugs over a period of time can lead to weight gain Okay, it affects your metabolism and it also increases your appetite. And as antidepressants and all, uh, it has 
uh, it increases the appetite, but it does not give you the um, push to go out and burn those calories. Okay, so that's how drugs affect. So is it clear to all regarding the etiology, the cause of Now coming to the theories of obesity. There are certain theories. Diabet diabetic medicines, diabetes, if you are diagnosed with diabetes, that leads to weight loss because uh, your body is unable to consume energy, un unable to make energy from glucose. So it shifts towards the fat stores. That's why you lose weight. Once you start taking diabetic medicines, people sometimes become overconfident that I am taking metformin so I can go back to eating whatever I want. Okay, my medicine will control it. People go into that state of mind. Okay, so whatever fat even they have lost uh, since now they are on metformin or they, if they're on insulin, okay, they gain back to, to, uh, that weight back because now the body has started using glucose for energy that fat deposits have regained okay they have regained their fat deposits so that's that could be a reason how they gain weight after being on diabetic medicine but diabetic disease alone it leads to weight loss if you have not diagnosed it yet or not taking any medicines for it the disease alone can lead to weight loss So first is your fat cell development theory or fat cell theory. Okay. So it, it states that obese children, they develop more fat cell since childhood. And more of the fat cells you have, more easily you will regain the lost weight. Okay. So early life from childhood, even in infancy, some infants are also obese because the mothers are feeding, overfeeding them. Okay. Just because the child does not stop eating, does not mean the child is full, okay? Some children are so uh, engrossed in, in their video games or play or TV or if they are watching a star smartphone and the parents are feeding, it, uh, feeding them, the children does not have the idea to understand that they are full. They have to say no, okay? I'm full, I don't want anything or they so some children, they cry, they show some tantrums that the parents will understand that the child is full. Okay, some children don't have the tendency to do that. Okay, they are in their own world. They are enjoying whatever uh, visual um, entertainment they are getting and the parents keep pushing food into them. Okay, and it becomes a habit and the child becomes obese. Okay, so when the child is obese since whatever young age they were in and the obesity started or even the overweight uh, issue started, Okay, it means that ch the child's body has developed more adipose cells, more fat cells. And even when the child grows up, okay, even if the child is overweight, the child lost weight, but the child will not lose the fat cells. Even if the fat cells are empty, they stay empty. Okay, but they don't completely destroy it. Fat cells don't disintegrate that easily. It's very difficult for the body to get rid of rid of fat cells even if it is empty okay so the adipose cells the fat cells remain as it is the uh, and if your child was obese or overweight or if any children is obese or uh, children are obese or overweight it means they naturally have more fat cells as compared to a lean child of their same age group okay so in the future even if the child is losing weight there is always a risk of gaining back all those lost weight because 
these empty spaces are already available to fill up with fat okay but that is uh, for a for a lean child a child who was lean okay since since their uh, childhood the child who was thin or in a in a uh, average weight okay when they grow up when they start gaining weight it's not at such a fast pace because their body first have to make fat cells and then store fat so double the work the body has to do to put on weight okay but the fat cells are already present in an obese child okay see for lean children what you can do is make sure if if the child is obese and you want your child to lose weight you have to promote physical activity okay you have to promote physical activity out of the house not inside the house out of the house the child has to go out sweat it out okay any form of physical activity that your child is interested in maybe it is contact sports dance gymnastics whatever it is okay without um, physical activity the child will not lose weight okay so that is one theory of fat cell theory the second theory is the set point theory okay means every individual has a ideal body weight which our body automatically sets based on our genetics based on our lifestyle based on what kind of geographical area we are from okay all these factors our stress levels based on a n number of factors your body itself knows this is the ideal weight you should be in your body has that biological set point okay so body weight is physiologically regulated usually by the body which means right now let's say you may be 65 kg okay you went for a vacation for 2 3 weeks okay you gained 2 uh, 3 kilos extra just within that 2 3 weeks what your body will understand that i have to increase the metabolism so that i can keep up with this additional calories that i'm getting okay so body's metabolism will shift body's metabolism will rise a little bit because it, the body is understanding that we are deviating from our ideal body weight we are moving towards more weight gain so metabolism should also increase otherwise we don't want the individual the host to become fat or overweight so body has a set point if the if the if slightly we increase our weight automatically our metabolism will also increase to bring that weight down okay that is the automatic automation that we have in our body okay so it can also help reduce fat set point with exercise which means uh, imagine uh, 65 was your biological set point you just gained 2 3 kilos okay it's very easy for you to lose that 2 3 kilos but uh, after a pregnancy or after one or two year of unhealthy lifestyle from 65 to uh, to uh, and you jump to 75 you were 65 last year this year you are 75 do you think your biological set point may have changed or is it the same it will change okay it will change now the your previous biological set point was 65 now your new biological set point will be around 70 okay you will be easily losing some 5 kilos but after that to lose that additional 5 kilos or additional 2 3 kilos it becomes very difficult for your body because your body has also shifted its set point so that's why we say that uh, even if you are on a weight loss journey the first 10 kgs you may have lost very easily but to reach your that final goal to reach that additional two three kilos it is very difficult for you your weight is not changing it's not coming down that's the set point theory because you were overweight for such a long period that your body has shifted its set point okay then there is one more theory that is not mentioned in your textbook but it is an additional theory that is hunger versus appetite okay hunger and appetite it's 
different. Okay, people usually consider both of them as same. Hunger is physiological. To you, if your calories, if your blood glucose levels are down, okay, if your body has used up the calories, you will feel hungry. It's physiological. Okay, it is the basic nature of human body. Okay, it's physiological. But appetite is psychological. Even though your body needs food, are you in the mood to eat food? That is appetite. Appetite is psychology. Okay. Even if the blood glucose levels are too low, okay, you have expended all your energy. But are you in a state, uh, mental state to eat food? For example, if somebody passed away in the family and the, and the family, near family members are mourning the lost, loss of the family member. So they are in a psychological states of grief, stress, okay, hopelessness. Okay, when these kind of psychological states come in, even if you are hungry, you don't have the appetite to eat. Okay, so that is the difference between hunger versus appetite. This is also another theory. Why do you eat? Okay, are you eating because are you hungry or do you, you just have the appetite or you don't have the appetite? Okay, so stress eating comes in this theory. Okay, stress eating. Even though you are not hungry, physiologically, your body has enough fat stores, glycogen stores, okay? But still, still you munch on things. Still, you eat things because you, you may be stressed out, okay? You may be anxious, okay? So, that is another theory. Is all the theories clear to all? Then we have the role of hormones. Very important. Okay. No, you can sh sh uh, shift your uh, set point weight. You just had to add more resistance. Okay. For example, if 65 kg was your set point. Okay. You were still overweight. Okay. You were so, uh, overweight. Even 65, you are overweight. And within a year, you became obese you crossed 70 75 okay you started dieting you controlled your food and moderate aerobic exercise like walking for two hours a day okay so that you have incorporated you lost 10 kg over a span of six to seven months okay you came back to your set point but you want to further more push your set point you want to reach 60 you want to furthermore push your body to more set point. You want to lose more. This is where you have to add resistance. You have to be on your diet. You have to do aerobic exercise. Along with that, you have to put weight training and resistance training as well. Okay. with Because your body is used to the 65 kg. Your body is happy in that state. Your body comes into a state of weight management, weight maintenance. Okay. Until you push your body more uh, by adding more resistance in your training, in your physical activities, only then you have to trick your body that it is heavy. Okay. Only then the body will try to shed more weight. Okay. So that's how you shift your biological set point. You have to just trick your body that you are heavy. And how can you trick your body? Just wear a, like you can buy some weights, ankle weights, wrist weights. Okay, chest weights, you can wave, uh, use that and do, do your walking. Okay, so you're tricking your body that it is heavy, so it has to lose more weight. Okay, or you can just wear a heavy bag. Okay, heavy backpack and go trekking or go walking or do your treadmill, treadmill walkings. Okay, so with that also you're tricking your body that it, it, you are heavy and you have to furthermore lose your weight. Okay, that's how you shift your biological set points. Coming to the role of hormones. So insulin, thyroid hormones, growth hormone and leptin. These are the 
main hormones associated with obesity. Insulin, 80% of people who are overweight or obese, okay, they have too much of insulin. Why the body is in a state of insulin resistance, okay? Pancreas are pumping out insulin, but the body cells are not responding to insulin. Okay, pancreas will think, let's make more insulin so that the cells will respond. But it doesn't work that way. Okay, so you have to work on your insulin resistance to lose weight. You have to work on your insulin resistance to lose weight. Okay, you have to improve the insulin sensitivity. Best way of doing it, whenever you have your lunch or dinner, just don't go and sit back or lie down. Okay, after having your lunch, immediately just walk for 15 minutes. That's it. After having dinner, walk for 15 minutes. Make make your body just slightly, you don't have to do any heavy workout. Okay, soon after lunch because otherwise you will vomit. Walking, brisk walking or doing some kitchen chores, standing and doing some kitchen chores, washing the utensils, cleaning the house or something like that, which keeps you slightly physically active that will improve your insulin sensitivity, okay? Then thyroid hormones. We all know hypothyroidism leads to weight issues, but not too much, okay? The way how thyroid, less amount of thyroid hormones will affect your metabolism is hardly by giving you extra three, four kgs, not more than that, okay? If you are suffering from hypothyroidism, the maximum weight gain that you will have is 3 to 4 kg, not more than that. If you are gaining more than 5 kg and you are diagnosed with hypothyroidism, okay, you can't blame your thyroid disorder all in all. Okay, it is your thyroid disorder, but along with that, your lifestyle because of which you have gained more than 5 kg or around 10 kg just because of thyroid disorders. Okay. Thyroid disorder alone on its own will only increase your weight just by 3 or 4 kg, not more than that. If if you are gaining more than uh, this amount of weight, it means your lifestyle choices are also the culprit here. Okay. So if you are diagnosed with thypo, uh, thyroid issues, get the medications done. Okay. Thyroxine tablets, levothyroxine is the most commonly used tablet. The, the endocrinologist will prefer prescribe it okay so growth hormone again it is decreased because the more growth hormone you can produce you will be able to maintain your lean muscles lean muscles okay the more lean muscles you have your metabolism will stay high because it takes a lot of energy to maintain the lean muscles. Okay. So if you don't have enough growth hormones, you will not ha have more lean muscles. Okay. And your body metabolism will also be low. Because it, if there is not enough lean muscles to maintain, your body will not have higher metabolism. So you will be gaining weight. So growth hormone is very important to lose weight. And then leptin, uh, leptin resistance is also common. Leptin uh, allows you to feel satiated, okay? And uh, to feel full after having food, after having meals, when you feel full that I don't want anything else, okay? So that is leptin. So you will not be sensitive to leptin. Your body will not be sensitive to leptin. Leptin is getting secreted, but your body, the brain does not identify it. So you keep on eating. It leads to overeating. Okay, so that leads to obesity. So these are the four hormones that play an important role in obesity. Then there are various assessments. Various assessments of uh, body weight based on your height and weight you can take a screenshot of this this is your height to weight ratio uh, the weight is given in pounds here okay uh, uh, it's not in kilograms weight is given in pounds height is given in feet okay not in centimeters okay so for male and female whatever is your height 
your corresponding weight is given okay what should be your target what is the lower point what is the highest weight okay what and what is your target weight in pounds it is given you can convert that into kilograms okay so just for your reference you have this assessment this is a body mass index assessment very easy i hope you know the body mass uh, formula index formula it's your weight divided by height in meter square okay weight should be in kilograms kg height should be in meter okay you have to, uh, send the height that you calculate in centimeter you have to convert it into meter okay multiply that you have to make the meter square okay so weight divided by height in meter square that is the bmi index okay so this in this table if you see um let's say if a person has a height of around 180 it's almost six feet okay 180 182 so 180 is the height of the person okay what do you think should be their ideal body weight in kgs healthy body weight Don't use the Broca index. Don't use the Broca index using this BMI table. Height is given. Weight is also given. If you look at the rows, weight is given. So this is how you have to use it. Okay. Height is given here. Okay. 180 is the height. If you go here till from 18 to 24 is the healthy range. 18 to 24 is the healthy range of weight okay so even if the person who is 180 okay 180 is the height even if the person is 61 kg or with 24 bmi if, if the person is 79 kg so 61 to 79 61.4 to 79.5 if that even that is the weight of the person it's completely fine okay it's uh, it's not 59 it's 61 because uh, 180 okay you have to take it from 61 50 uh, 59 it will be still slightly lower you have to take it from uh, 18 whatever is given as the green tag here that's it okay So that's how you use this chart, BMI chart. 59, sorry, 61 to 79 would be the ideal weight range for a person who is 180 centimeter. So just like that, let's say if the person is 160 centimeter. Okay, if a person is 160 centimeter, what do you think is the ideal weight range for them? Yes, 47.7 to 63.6. Okay, so this is how you have to use this chart, BMI chart. Is it clear to all? So if a client comes to you, if the, their height is so and so, and they ask you what should be my ideal weight, okay? In Broca index, if you go by Broca index, if the client comes to you, the client's height is 160, if you go by Broca index, you will say your your, your weight should be 60 because 100 minus uh, 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 the uh, 100 minus the height. Okay, so you get you get whatever uh, whatever is remaining that that is the, that number is your ideal weight. Okay, but when you use the BMI chart like this, at least you will get a weight range. Okay, you can guide your client. See, this is your ideal weight range. Based on your height, your weight should be between this. Okay, 
So people have their personal goals as well. Even though a person's ideal weight should be 50, okay, but their weight range is around 47 to 56, okay, 47 to 56, let's say it's uh, it's their ideal weight range, but their, uh, uh, their current weight right now is 50, okay. Now they may have a personal goal. They, they may say, I want to add, I want to gain a little bit more. I'm very skinny. I want to gain a little bit more. So as a dietitian, you can guide them. You can definitely gain, but not more than 5 kg. You should not cro cross more than 56. You can definitely gain weight, but this the, you should limit. You should be within this limit. Okay. So that's how you can guide people using this BMI chart. Always focus on this green area. This is the healthy area. Okay. If the person is in the blue area, you have to guide them to gain more weight. Okay. If they are in this yellow area, it is overweight. They have to come back to close at least to 23, 24 should be their BMI. Okay. Personal goals should be kept in mind while making a diet plan. Then another assessment that we use is the waist circumference, okay? So it's very simple. You have to just take the measuring tape, okay? Whatever is your waist size and whatever is your hip size, okay? You have to calculate that. That is the waist to hip ratio. Waist circumference, you just have to calculate the waist size, okay? So ideally we say uh, a woman whose waist, uh, whose waist, okay, if it is more than 35, okay, if you are buying a jeans, if you are buying a trouser or a jeans and your trouser size is more than 34, till 34, it's still, you have a low risk of cardiovascular diseases, okay, or obesity. Women, if their weight, waist size is more than 34, then they are at a higher risk of cardiovascular diseases. Men whose waist size is more than 39 or 40, okay, or, let, or we can use a cutoff figure of 38 as well. Okay, if the if men whose jeans and trouser size, when they purchase it, okay, when they go for 38 or more than 38 is their uh, waist circumference, then again, they are also at a higher risk of developing cardiovascular diseases. It's, it's common that, mm, people with these waist circumference are suffering from overweight or obesity issues, okay? Because they have a lot of fat in their belly, okay? So anyone uh, in, uh, in females, if your waist size is less than 34, you don't have to worry much. Don't, uh, it's, not, it's not that you don't have to forget about cardiovascular diseases based on your genetics, based on your family history, your height and all, okay? Things do change. But usually it's seen that women below the, whose, whose weight size is less than 34, 34 or less than 34, their risk is very low. Okay, risk is very low. And men whose weight size is less than 38, their risk is low. Okay, 38 or less than 38, their risk is low. So that is about the waist circumference. High risk categories uh, are given in the textbook as well. And this is the measurement of body fat. Okay, this is a DEXA scan report. DEXA scan, dual energy, X-ray, absorbimetry. Okay, that is the full form of DEXA. Okay, or we call it as bone densitometer as well. Okay, the bone density can also be uh, found using this scan. I have mentioned in the, uh, in the chat box, Dex this is DEXA scan. So the person has to light, lie straight and they have to turn around and li uh, lie down as well because... The front part and the back part both, how much is their weight, uh, not the weight, how much is their fat collection, what is their muscle, okay, now the, what is the percent of their muscle, what is their bone density, okay, these things can be found out using a DEXA scan, okay, so you can look at here how it can be interpreted, the more yellow orange area, okay, uh, the yellow or orange area, that is the fat deposits, okay, the uh, the red area, red to pinkish area, these are the lean muscle deposits, okay? 
and the light blue areas these are the most dense area of the bones so you can see here just by looking at this picture do you think this person is at a risk of hip fractures do you think this person will be at a risk of hip fractures Yes, the person is at the risk of hip fractures because the bone density in hip, the bone density in the hip area is low. Okay, it's, it, it should have been this sky blue light color even in the hip areas. It is low. Okay, uh, hip, uh, hip bones are in dark blue. It's not light blue. So, they are at a risk of hip fractures. Okay, so this is how you interpret you don't have to diagnose it, but you at least you have a general idea. Even if you look at your DEXA scan, you will be identifying, just by looking at it, you will identify which part of your body is storing a lot of fat, okay? And how much lean muscles you have, okay? Based on the these colors, we get a score. This percent, you uh, the fat, body fat percent in your, uh, in, within you is so-and-so, okay? So that's the use of DEXA scan. Then we have ponderal index. Uh, the formula is given as weight in grams divided by height in centimeter cube multiplied by 100. Okay. In, uh, in your textbook, the ponderal index is given in terms of inches and pounds. So that's why slight different, uh, slightly different, you will find the formula, the one that is given in the textbook and what, what you see here because here the weight is given in grams Okay, the unit of measurement here is gram and centimeter. Okay, but in the textbook, uh, the unit of measurement is inches and weight is in pounds. Okay, that's why there is a, diff a slight difference in the formula. Okay, but uh, ponderal index, I would suggest you to use uh, your Google. Okay, ponderal index calculator, you can use Google. Put your weight and height. Okay, it will give you the answer. Okay, usually how do we calculate if your weight is high or low? Your uh, ponderal index, if it is less than 13, when you put, uh, use use a Google calculator, if you just can just Google ponderal index calculator uh, in Google, you will get few websites, okay? You can choose any website, click on that, just put your height and weight in whatever unit of measurements they're asking, okay? I think in most websites, you can change the unit of measurements as well, okay? So you can put your height and weight there and whatever answer you get, if it is more than 13, then you're fine. But if the answer is less than 13, 1, 3, 13, if the answer is less than 13, whatever result you get, if it is less than 13, it's obesity, okay? So that is ponderal index. Then you have waist to hip ratio. Again, using a measuring tape, find out your waist. Waist size, I guess, majority of the people know already. You get your trousers, jeans from online and you know your size, okay? So, waist size, you know, in inches. And you have to find out your hip, okay? The the, the most highest part of your hip, uh, you have to uh, uh, take the measurement of your pelvic area, okay? The entire pelvic bone, including the highest portion of your hip, okay? So, that's how you get find the hip in inches as well. Units of measurement should be same. If you're using waist in centimeters, a hip also should be found in centimeters. If it is inches, numerator, denominator, both should be in inches, okay? So if you have a high, very high waist to hip ratio because waist is the numerator, hip is the denominator, okay? If your waist to hip ratio is high, usually if it is more than one and all, okay or very close to one it means you are at a very high risk of developing cardiovascular diseases because you store a lot of belly fat okay you store a lot of abdominal fat that's why your waist is bigger as compared to your hip so that's an apple type apple body type okay women generally come under the pear shapes okay women generally carry a lot of uh, fat in their hip areas so usually 
uh, it's usual, no, not not all women. Usually, women have a pear shape. Okay, but there are also women who have an apple sized body. They have very thin legs, but they have a heavy upper part of their body. The you know, waist above part is quite heavy, and they have very thin legs and uh, very uh, less hips. Okay, so that's the apple body. It can exist both in men and women. Pear shape also. Some men also do have pear shaped body. Okay. So that is the waist to hip ratio. In men, if it is, if your waist to hip ratio gives you one close, uh, uh, an answer very close to one, one or above means you are at a high risk of developing cardiovascular diseases. Indian men usually have this because they have a very skinny body, but they have uh, a heavy abdomen. They carry a lot of weight. We call it pot belly, beer belly. Okay. So it means you are carrying a lot of visceral fat. You have to reduce your cholesterol. If you get your get your cholesterol checked, the cholesterol will definitely be high in people who have a pot belly. It means you carry a lot of visceral fat. Okay, fat around your organs is quite high. Physical activity, low carbohydrate diet, high protein diet, these things are recommended. And uh, it's ideal people who have pot bellies just to have two meals a day. Okay, it's usual. It's usually seen in uh, men and women who have a sedentary lifestyle, pot bellies. Okay, so if you can't change your sedentary lifestyle or you have a very busy life and you don't have enough uh, accommodation for physical activities, just stick to intermittent fasting or go for just two meals a day. That will benefit you a lot. And even in two meals, go for low carb, high protein diet, low fat, low carb, high protein diet. So that would help. Okay. Then BROCA index, height, which is given in centimeters minus 100 for men. For women, height in centimeters minus 105. In your textbook, they have given just one formula for men and women, but usually it's slightly different. Okay. It's the easiest calculator. Whatever is your height minus 100, you get your ideal weight. Okay. Whatever is your height minus 105 for women, you get your ideal weight. That is your ideal standpoint. Okay. Two or three kilos plus or minus is completely fine. You don't have to fret a lot about it. Okay. Two, three kilos up and down is fine from your ideal weight. People who have high uric acid, usually you will be diagnosed with, you have a risk of developing gouts, or, or gouts arthritis. Okay. So you will be given a list of food that you have to avoid. Okay. There are food that have high uric acid in them. That food has to be avoided. Then you have different grades of obesity. We get this, uh, this grades by doing your BMI. Okay. When, whenever your BMI is above 30, it means you're obese. If it is between 25 and 30, it means you are overweight. But if above 30, equal to or above 30, obese. Okay. Even under that, you have categories 30 to 34, approximately 35, you come under class 1 obesity. 35 to 39.9 .9 is class 2. 40 and above is morbid obesity. It's uh, obesity class 3. Okay. So usually, people who uh, have a grade 2 and grade 3 obesity. They suffer from a lot of diseases. Okay. Respiratory, circulatory, metabolic, atherosclerosis, diabetes, hypertension, fatty liver, arthritis, hernia, varicose vein. Okay. And also the mortality rate, death rate also increases if you are obese. Okay. Then your adipose tissue. Apple shape and pear shape as we have discussed earlier. It's usually, uh, this is Android fat deposition. When you have an apple shape, you, you use, a, use, use up a lot of fat in your upper body. In gynoid fat deposition, it's in your hips and upper thighs. Okay. So hormones also play a very important role. Uh, if you, if women, 
women who usually have a higher production of estrogen okay estrogen is the hormone that attracts all the fat towards your hip and upper thighs okay but if a woman has high progesterone the it will be attracted towards her uh, belly area okay abdominal area it's because of the presence of estrogen women naturally uh, hold a lot of fat in their hip and waist area okay so hormones plays an important role the way how nutrients are metabolized okay and adipose tissue also you have different types of adipose tissue white brown and pink pink adipose tissue is seen in only women okay it's used up uh, you gain the weight that you gain during pregnancy is what we call as pink adipose tissue which you will lose when you start lactating okay because this fat will be used up in milk production that is pink adipose tissue brown brown adipose tissue regulates your body temperature the more brown adipose tissue you have the more metabolism you will have because the mitochondria present in brown adipose tissue is high white adipose tissue is the usual fat cells okay the visceral fat uh, the subcutaneous fat that you find okay when you lose weight okay when you see that you are losing weight when you are on a diet okay when you are on a weight loss diet and all it's the white adipose tissue that you lose first okay these are movable fat cells okay they, they can be used up by the body quickly okay not the brown adipose tissue the white adipose tissue this is the android versus gynecoid so people who have an android kind of a fat deposition apple shaped body they have a higher risk of hypertension that is high bp insulin resistance diabetes dyslipidemia that is cholesterol issues okay coronary heart diseases and gynecoid gynoid is like re relatively benign it's not that harmful and it's usually found in women okay it is kind of an energy reserve for pregnancy and lactation demands that's it then the types of obesity you have juvenile onset obesity from the name itself develops in infancy or childhood and it increases as mentioned earlier based on the fat cell theory okay from infancy or childhood if a person if a child is obese or overweight naturally they will have a higher number of adipose cells and also the size of the adipose cells will be bigger okay size and number both will be bigger okay so and adipose cells as mentioned earlier they have a very long lifespan okay because they have to store fat body will not risk losing adipose cells even if you lose weight adipose cells empty cells will still be present here and there okay the body will not get rid of it because body is preparing for a weight gain okay internally body is preparing for a weight gain so it is difficult to lose this fat children who have suffered from obesity from a childhood even though they lose weight weight maintenance is a big thing for them it's a difficult thing for them okay the the lost weight they have to keep it off their body that's a very main goal for them okay so it causes poor, the reasons for juvenile onset obesity poor dietary patterns obviously overfeeding by the parents lack of physical activity see metabolic syndrome it is basically like diabetes is also a metabolic syndrome okay it's about the dyslipidemia the table that you have mentioned it's about dyslipidemia and also the glucose levels which usually you see in a diabetic patient or a person who is suffered who is suffering from obesity from a long term okay these are the blood diagnoses you will find okay when you get their blood sample usually this is the range that you find cholesterol and glucose okay that's a diagnostic that's the clinical part you don't have to worry so 43% of adolescents watch 2 hours or more of tv nowadays it is smartphones okay so that is also one of the reason why more and more young people suffer from juvenile onset obesity
Then you have adult onset obesity. Develops in adulthood, not from childhood. So you are you will have fewer number of adipose cells. Okay, as compared to you, you have a classmate, let's say, okay, from childhood you are together, but your friend was quite obese. You were the lean one, okay. Now you are in a certain age, you are in your adulthood, you may be around your 30s and all. The child, uh, the your friend who was obese since childhood will have more adipose cells because you are of the same age. So this comparison, they, the, uh, your friend who is obese will have higher amount of adipose cells and also larger cells. But if you are getting obese in your adulthood, not in your adolescence, teenage, not in your ch ch childhood, after being an adult, your lifestyle shifted and you're getting obese. So what happens to your body is you will not have that much number of adipose cells as compared to your friend initially. Okay, But adipose cells have this characteristic Okay, this is very typical characteristic of adipose cells in anybody's body. It can grow bigger and bigger in size. They can expand, adipose cells can expand to store as much of fat it can. Okay, that is a characteristic of adipose cells. So initially, only your adipose cells will grow bigger in size. But if you don't do anything about it, the number of adipose cells will also increase eventually. What happened to your friend in their childhood, it will start happening to you in your adulthood. Okay. Is it clear to all the types of obesity? At a cellular level, uh, what happens? So coming to strategies of weight management, so strategies of weight management and under uh, people who are underweight, how to gain weight. This we will see in next class, okay? Because we will give examples based on certain circumstances. I'll give you examples. You have to calculate the calories. We'll come up with a calorie diet chart, okay? And also for a person who is underweight, how they will have to put on weight. This we will discuss in next class. So far, all the theories, is it clear to all?